one, you know who it is, you know what it is. All right, you guys, peep game. All right, man, I decided to do my top five NBA MVP candidates for the 2017-2018 season. And basically, my choices are basically based off my fucking opinion. And you don't have to agree with me. If you have a better list, that's fine, too. This is an opinion-based video. So, here we go, and I'm going to give you my top five, and I will explain why. All right, you guys, at... Number five, I have Victor Oladipo of the Indianapolis Pacers. The kid is balling, man. He's putting up some serious numbers. Uh, he's putting up 24 a game. Keep in mind, this dude was drafted very high. I think he was drafted number two overall. Can't remember. But the expectation for him was pretty huge. And they was talking about which was the most asinine, you know, name ever. They was talking about Michael Jordan. I was like... Come on, don't do that to that kid. But uh, keep in mind, for some reason, he just couldn't get it together in Orlando. And then he played one season with um, the Oklahoma City Thunder. But now, you know, in, in replacement of Paul George, he's putting up some solid numbers. And Indianapolis is the Indiana uh, Pacers are, you know, above 500 so far. So that's why I have him at number five he's a long shot to win but you know what i'm saying it is what it is and i gotta give him his just due now coming in at number four Giannis. what can i say the kid has gotten better and better every year this is a dude that i think if you could put the right pieces around him he can lead you to a championship i see it in him he is good he is damn good. You know what I'm saying? He, I'm telling you, Milwaukee have a jewel in this kid. They need to do whatever it takes to get him to stay. That's the problem. Getting superstars like Giannis to stay in a place like Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to Milwaukee, but you know how this is, you know. They see a chance to go to the Heat and all them type of cities and you know, they, they jump at it. But hopefully Milwaukee can get this dude to stay and they build the team around around him. Because like I said, I can see him, if you put the right pieces around him, he could win a championship. And I do believe eventually within the next five years, if he keep playing like how he's playing, he will be the dude to hold the mantle, you know, alongside with Kevin Durant. You know, when LeBron James packs it in, keep in mind Kevin Durant is, is uh, 29. He still got, got at least four good years left. And Kevin Durant will be the best player in the league when LeBron James leaves. And then I think Giannis will hold that torch. I think Giannis has the, the potential to be tremendous. And that's why I have him at number four. If Milwaukee had a better record, I would have him, you know what I'm saying, possibly at number one okay at number three the guy who's always sort of like what you call the Cinderella you know what I'm saying the step the Cinderella stepchild you know what I'm saying he's always left out is you know fear the beard James Harden you know you know what James Harden can do the dude balls out he plays he's one of the best players in the league and as long as Houston has him, they will always be a championship contender. You know what I'm saying? Some people believe this is the year he may, you know, break through the wall. Keep in mind, he finished back-to-back uh, -back years behind Stephen Curry in the MVP race. And then, as you guys know, you know, Russell, Russell Westbrook won it. There was an argument maybe they could have had a co-MVP. But, you know, they really don't like doing that in the NBA. So... You know, James Harden, this may be this may be the year for James Harden. Maybe. Now, at number two, I have the four time MVP LeBron James. Um Cleveland looks horrible. You know, Derrick Rose hasn't been there. Uh they say Isaiah Thomas is coming back pretty soon. And at the beginning of the season, Cleveland looked very shaky. Cleveland looked like they were headed towards the draft, and LeBron had one foot out the door, headed to wherever. But LeBron James has put this team on his back. 
He's playing like, you know, the future NBA first ballot Hall of Famer that he is. He's playing like he's one of the best that ever did it. Say what you want to say about LeBron James. You know, at times he's let the fans down by not entering one fucking slam dunk contest and just other shit. Outside of basketball, LeBron James is a good dude. But just in certain times, LeBron James has, you know, failed, you know, especially in the NBA Finals. But nevertheless, that doesn't take away the fact that he's one of the greatest players of all time. So at number two, I have LeBron James. Number one, uh, at, at this moment, I still have Kyrie Irving because the Boston Celtics still have the best, you know, the best record in the NBA. Uh, people thought their season was good as done, you know, when Hayward went down. But Kyrie Irving, he showed leadership. He's playing like a dude that's been there before. He's put this team on his back as well. Now, he's not putting up what you would call stellar numbers, but keep in mind, Steve Nash won the MVP back-to-back years, and he wasn't the leading scorer on his team or the leading scorer in the league. So I don't think scoring is that big of an issue. I think it's what you're doing and contributing to the team. So there you have it. Those are my five, you know what I'm saying, choices for possible MVP. So we'll see what happens, man. I'm out.